Hi all, section 10.4, we're gonna cover the topic of installment buying. There's gonna be two main types of installment buying we're going to talk about. We're gonna talk about fixed installment loans and open-ended installment loans. A fixed installment loan is one in which you pay a fixed amount of money for a set number of payments. So examples would be your college tuition, loans for cars, boats, appliances, furniture, etc. They're usually repaid in 24, 36, 48, or 60 months. An open-ended installment loan is a loan in which you can make variable payments each month. The best example would be credit cards. Um, there is a law called the Truth in Lending Act that happened in 1968. This law requires that the lending institution tell you, the borrower, two things. First, they have to tell you the annual percentage rate, which is the APR, and it is the true rate of interest charged for the loan. Second, they have to tell you the total finance charge, and this is the total amount of money the borrower must pay for borrowing the money. Interest plus any additional fees charged. The total installment price is the sum of all the monthly payments and the down payment if there was one. Table 10.2 is um, something you may want to print out. Um, I did put it in the online notes if you'd like to use it. And it calculates the actual annual percentage rate for you. So for example, if you had a loan that required 24 payments and they told you that you were paying 6% interest, by the time you actually pay the loan off with the installment plan, you'll have actually paid 6.37% interest. Um, it is possible to calculate your monthly payment. It is a very detailed formula. The monthly payment is found by taking P times R divided by N, placing that in a numerator, and then this is divided by 1 minus the quantity 1 plus R over N, raised to the negative n times t. In this situation, m is going to be what your monthly installment payment is, p is the amount you financed or the principal, r is the annual percentage rate and this will be given as a decimal, n is the number of payments you're going to make per year, and t is the number of years that you will have the loan. Let's look at an example. Kristen wishes to purchase new window blinds for her house at a cost of $1,500. The home improvement store has an advertised finance option of no down payment and 6% annual percentage rate for 24 months. Determine Kristen's monthly payment. Okay, so we're going to have to use that payment formula that we saw on the previous slide. So let's jot that down so we don't forget it. The monthly payment is going to equal the principal times the rate divided by n all over 1 minus 1 plus r over n raised to the negative nt. So in this problem, the amount she borrowed was $1,500. The rate she is paying is 6%, and she is making monthly payments. And she is going to have the loan for two years, which is 24 months. Okay, so if I was doing this, I would first simplify um, what's in the parentheses. So I would take my 0.06 and divide it by 12, which is going to give you 0.005. And then in your denominator, you'll have 1.005 raised to the negative 24. I would then go ahead and figure out what my denominator and my numerator is going to be. So I would take my 1500 times 0 0.005, which is going to give me 7.5 in the numerator. And then I would take 1 minus 1.005 raised to the negative 24. And that will give you 0.112814 three three one one and then you're going to divide those two numbers and you'll get sixty six point four eight so for two years she'll have to make a sixty six dollar and forty eight cent payment to pay off this loan sometimes people like to pay off a loan early 
By repaying by paying off a loan early, you are not obligated to pay the entire finance charge that's quoted to you. The amount of the reduction of the finance charge from paying off a loan early is called the unearned interest. There are two methods used to determine the finance charge when you repay an installment loan early. You can do the actuarial method, which uses the APR table, that was table 10.2, or you can do the rule of 78s. This, this does not use the APR table, and it's actually um, not used very frequently at all. And in the United States, it's outlawed in most of the states. So we're actually not going to cover the rule of 78s. We're just going to focus on the actuarial method today. So to calculate your unearned interest, you need to take N, which is the number of remaining monthly payments, times P, which is the amount of the monthly payment, times V, which is the value from the APR table for the number of remaining payments. Then you need to divide that by 100 plus V. This will tell you how much unearned interest there is. So let's look at an example. Tino borrowed $9,800 to purchase a classic 1966 Ford Mustang. The APR is 7.5% and there are 48 payments of $237. Instead of making his 30th payment of his 48 payment loan, Tino wishes to pay his remaining balance and terminate the loan. Uh, use the actuarial method to determine how much interest Tino will save, which is the unearned interest, by repaying the loan early. Okay, so remember the formula for unearned interest is U equals N times capital P times capital V over 100 plus capital V. Okay, well N is the number of payments he has left. There was 48 payments total. He's on payment number 30. So there's going to be 18 payments remaining. So that's going to be our N value. P is the amount of his monthly payment, and it said on the previous slide that he pays $237 a month. And then the V, which is both in the numerator and the denominator, comes from the table. So keep in mind that he has 18 payments left and that his interest rate is 7.5%. So let me show you how to get this value from the table. Okay, so if I look at the table, I want to go to the number of payments, and we're looking at the number of payments remaining. So we want to look at the 18, not the 48. I have 18 payments left, and then if you scroll across the top, you're going to look for the interest rate that you currently have. So I have 18 payments remaining, and I have an interest rate of 7.5%. So the V is going to be 6.04. And that value is going to go both in the numerator. It is going to be multiplied, oops, sorry. It's going to be multiplied next to the 237. It's also going to be added to the 100 in the denominator. Now, if I'm doing this by hand, first thing I'm going to do is multiply all the numbers in the numerator. I'm going to multiply the 18 the 237 and the 604. Which is 25,766.64. I'm going to add 106.04. And then I'm going to divide. And I'm going to get $242, and it's 0.9898. And we're talking about money here, so we're going to round to two decimal places. So this is going to be $242.99. So this is how much interest um, Tony is going to save by paying off the loan early, $242.99. Now, part B, I want to know the total amount due to pay the loan off early on the day he makes his final payment. So keep in mind that he's on payment number 30. And so um, the total remaining payments would have been 18 times $237. Okay, so um, what we're going to have to first do is take the number of the remaining payments 
and figure out how much he has to pay for those. So he still has $4,266 left. And then you get to deduct um, the unearned interest, which was $242.99, which leaves you $4,023.01. Okay, so that covers the remaining 18 payments. He still does need to make his 30th payment, so he needs to add the $237 so that he can make his 30th payment. And so he's going to have to write a check for $4,260.01. So remember, this was top number, was the remaining payments. Then we deducted the unearned interest. We added his 30th payment, and this gave us how much he has to pay at the end. Now let's move on to open and installment loans. Um, credit, a credit card is a popular way of making purchases or borrowing money, and typically a credit card accounts report um, your purchases, your daily periodic rate, your annual percentage rate, and the notice for cash advances is usually quite a bit higher. Now these rates are different for every credit card you have, so when you go to look at credit cards, you should really look to see what they're charging you to make sure that it's the best option that you can get. Typically, credit card monthly statements will contain the balance at the beginning of the period, the balance at the end of the period, any transactions that happen during the period, the statement closing date, the payment due date, and the minimum payment you have to make. For purchases, there is no finance or interest charge if there's no previous balance due and you pay the entire new balance by the payment due date. The period between when a purchase is made and when the credit card company begins charging interest is called the grace period. It's usually 20 to 25 days. However, if you use a credit card to borrow money, this is called a cash advance. There is generally no grace period and a finance charge is applied from the date you borrowed the money until the date you repay the money. Many lending institutions use the average daily balance method of calculating the finance charge because they believe this is um, fairer to the customer. When the average daily balance method, a balance is determined each day of the billing period for which there's a transaction in the account. So let's look at an example of the average daily balance method. The balance on MIN's credit card account on July 1st, the billing date was $375.80. The following transactions occurred during the month of July. On July 5th, he made a payment of $150. On July 10th, he had a charge at a toy store of $74.35. On July 18th, he had a charge at the garage for $123.50. And on July 28th, he had a charge at a restaurant for $42.50. Determine the average daily balance for the billing period. Okay, so to determine the average daily balance, we're going to have to do several steps. First thing we have to do is kind of break this down by date. So on July 1, he had a balance. His opening balance was $375.80. Then on July 5th, he um, made a payment. So we take our $375.80. We're going to deduct the payment, which was $150, and now his balance is $225.80. Then on July 10th, he made a purchase. The purchase um, is going to be added to the $225.80. The purchase was for $74.35, so now his balance is back up to $300.15. Then on July 18th, there was another purchase. So this is going to be added to his current balance. The purchase was for $123.50. So his new balance is $423.65. And then last, on July 18th, sorry, 28th, he made a purchase. So again, this is going to increase our um, balance. The last purchase was for $42.50. So now the balance is for $466.15.
So now you can see the balance throughout um, the month. Now what you need to do is you need to find the number of days that the balance did not change between each transaction. So count the first date in the period, but not the last date. Note that the time period from July 28th through August 1st, the beginning of the next billing cycle is four days. Okay, so I need to find out the number of days that all these events occurred. So I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. Okay, so we went from July 1st to July 5th without anything changing. I'm just going to make me a little table here. So that means um, there was four days of the month where my balance was $375. Then I went from the 5th to the 10th, so that's a five-day change. Then I went from the 10th to the 18th, eight-day change. The 18th to the 28th, which is a 10-day change. And then I need to get from July 28th to August 1st. So you need to count the 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st. So that's four days. So remember, if you total these up, these should total up to be the total days of the month, which is 31 days. Now what you need to do is you need to take each of the days <clears throat> or each balance and you need to multiply it by the number of days that you had that balance. So we need to take 375.80 times 4. We need to take 225.80 times 5. You need to take 315 times 8, $423.65 times 10, $466.15 times 4, and then you need to add all of these together to find your total. Okay, so when you add them all together, you get $11,134.50. Now, you need to take that number, $11,134.50, and divide it by the number of days that is in the, mo in the month. And you'll get $359.18. This is your average daily balance. Next, I'd like to know what the finance charge to be paid on August 1st, so NIN's next billing date. So assume the interest rate is 1.3% per month. So remember, you need to do I equals P R T. Um, you need to take the average daily balance that you just found, times the interest rate, times the time. And this is an interest rate per month, and we are only having the balance for one month, so we'll multiply by one. So his um, finance charge is $4.67 for this month. And then last, I'd like to determine the balance on August 1st. So to do this, you need to take the balance that was at the end of the month, which was the $466.15, and you need to add the finance charge to this. And then this will tell you how much his balance is going to be in August. So it's not like terribly complicated, but it is a little bit time consuming. So I'd advise that you um, use lined paper and stay organized. You could even um, go to, with Microsoft Excel if that's easier for you.